Hello, thanks for watching and I hope we're keeping well during the current coronavirus pandemic. So this video is a brief guidance and introduction to making videos for YouTube. Um, I've been asked produ to produce this by the Central Council ahead of a couple of Ringing World articles that will be appearing this Friday, that's the 1st of May 2020. Um, so it's, the aim of this video is just to give a brief introduction to filming your footage to editing the video and then to uploading it to YouTube and I hope you'll find it helpful and informative um, and at the end if I haven't covered anything particularly well or if you've got any comments please stick them in the comments and I'd be very happy to respond. So the first thing I want to touch on is a few hints and tips for when you're filming so you're in the tower you're ready to start recording and make your footage for later. So. The first thing, and this is important, so we'll get it out of the way early on, uh, make sure everybody in the tower knows you're filming and knows that you intend to upload to YouTube afterwards. Just be clear on that uh, from the beginning. And if somebody says no or they don't want you to, then you stop. And there's no two ways about that. That's Please respect that. Um, if everybody is happy, then great, carry on and film. And it might be that somebody doesn't want their face uh, to be shown but they're quite happy for the ringing to be filmed if they're not in shot absolutely fine uh, just respect that and abide by that so that aside we're moving on and assuming everybody's happy to be recorded um, the first thing certainly I look out for is what what it looks like how many people can I see you know do I get a good overview of the ringing room and it's anything else to look out for. Um, there's some videos, some of the older ones, particularly online, where you've just got a camera pointing up at a ceiling. Now that might be okay if you're focusing on striking or if people in the room don't want their faces on film, etc. Absolutely fine. Uh, but if possible, try and get a good a view as possible. Now you might be on an outing where you can stand out of a touch and wave the camera around the room to a point. Um, if you are standing and moving a camera about just try and keep your hand steady wobbly hand syndrome makes it very awkward you know to pick out it makes you a bit seasick watching to be completely honest um, if you're on an outing and there's not enough people or maybe you're ringing the quarter peel then the best thing to do is to put the camera on a surface somewhere preferably a flat one and something that shows as many of the ringers as possible now i produced a video of north Allerton fairly recently and the view I point was the viewpoint. Sorry, I picked was really good. You can see all ten ringers very clearly in shot. Uh, the only bit of me you can see is the back of my head and hands, but everyone else you can clearly see. And I was really pleased with that. Um, another one I did was Campbell just before, and there wasn't really anywhere to put the camera. You could see everyone. There weren't anything to to lean it on or to put it atop. So I what you've got is three or four ringers, and I was lucky actually. I was able to get two different viewpoints so we got two sides of the ring in but just try and make you know the view itself as interesting as you can so other considerations so most importantly next is the striking you know the second thing i look out for other than uh, the viewpoint and that you know what it looks like is how good it sounds you know is there a good quality of striking um, uploading a poor piece of ringing doesn't look good on you it doesn't look good on the band and it doesn't look good on ringing itself. Um, we know it and accept that not every touch is going to be perfect. There might be method mistakes, there might be someone learning, it might be an inexperienced band, that's all acceptable. Um, but if you think it's going to be poor or the touch has been rung and it wasn't very good, just delete the footage, it's not a problem, no one's lost anything. Um, if you don't get any good ringing from the tower, not the end of the world, you know, you can always go back another day, the bells are still going to be there. Um, but often uploading a poor piece of ringing is more detrimental than actually doing any good. And kind of on the subject, you know, of the view and the angles, um, and this is particularly good if you're on an outing rather than, you know, there for a quarter peel, um, is you get to experiment, you know, with different viewpoints, different angles. You might be able to film outside and inside and some bells do sound very different outside for better or for worse. Um, very occasionally you might be able to get access to the belfry and um, this isn't something I usually ask to do but if it's offered I don't ever say no. If you are going up into the belfry all the normal safety rules apply you know don't stand anywhere close to the bells uh, always make sure you've got somebody there preferably the tower captain you know who knows the setup 
and is happy for, for you to film up there, etc. And just take a bit of precaution because no one wants to get hurt, you know, whilst making these videos. It really isn't worth it. And I guess the same when you're in the ringing room and filming. Don't stand in anybody's way. Don't stand too close to the ropes. And if you're standing in the middle of the ringing circle and filming, then try not to, you know, obstruct anybody's view. You might need to crouch down, you know, just so everybody can see each other. But the, a really important point to note, actually, is that, you know, your filming should not detract the quality of ringing. It shouldn't put people off. It shouldn't make anybody uncomfortable. It's a nice thing to do, uh, but only if everybody's happy with it. OK, so you've done your filming, you've got home, you've put everything onto your computer and now you want to edit the video. You don't want to upload the footage raw. So the uh, program I use for my video editing is Windows Movie Maker 7. It's a little bit outdated these days. You can still get it. Uh, I did use Movie Maker 10 once on a lone laptop. Personally, I didn't like it. I didn't think it worked very well. It wasn't logical. Um, but there's lots and lots of editing programs out there. If you use an iPhone or an Apple product, I'm afraid I haven't got a clue. Uh, I've never used any of them. Um, I'm a f I do believe that iPhones have their own video editing software, but someone will correct me on that, I'm sure. But just have a Google, have a play. But I'm going to very briefly show you Windows Movie Maker 7 as a very easy to use and fairly self-explanatory video editing. So. This uh, video is Corsten, which I made the other day. Some of you may have seen it. And it's just being used here as a demo example. So in traditional Simon way, we've got an animation to start. The caption telling you what we're ringing and where. We animate into the video. We have a photo halfway with a bit of cool animation I'll show you in a minute. Another animation into the second part of the video. And then the church photo to finish and black out. Uh, obviously goes without saying uh, the video was about 20 minutes worth um, and I cut it down into two two or so minutes so sections. Um, where, which I thought was the best bits. Uh, both bits were about 15 minutes in, actually. We've had a little bit of time to settle. So we're just going to uh, explore briefly. So add videos and photos, fairly self-explanatory. It'll select videos from the last folder you used them. So luckily the last photo I selected for a Movie Maker project was Corsten. So you double click, photo appears. And of course, if you click delete, you can get rid of it. Add music. If any of you have watched videos such as Tadcaster or Inverary on my channel, uh, you'll have seen I've overlaid an audio recording of the bells across a lot of photos. Uh, it's quite nice to do that. It showcases all your photos while capturing the ringing at the same time. Uh, caption, I tend to put at the beginning, as I've said, you can experiment with how you want it to in. What colour outline you want, it's bright red at the moment, the font style, etc. Have a play, and all this really is just playing and suiting it to your personal taste. Animations. So we're going to the animation tab. Now, the slight problem with Movie Maker 7 is the first um, material you use, be that the first photo or the video. If you put a video first, you've only got about different options to use. But as soon as you go into the second bit, be that the first video, etc., following the first photo, you've got a wider range. Choose. There's hundreds of them. Knock yourself out. And to get rid of an animation, we'll just select that. Um, in terms of photos particularly, we can zoom. There's different ways of zooming in on a photo. 
makes it move a bit rather than keeping it static. So we can make it twist a little bit on the top left. And I tend to use is zoom in center. And you'll see this photo here as a very cool rainbow effect. This comes under the visual effects tab. Again, there's plenty. I can make it spin. I could make it if you, if you run it, it's a very wobbly tower, that's quite satisfying. But the rainbow effect is that one there. And then the final tab I use is edit. Uh, for photos, this only really is the duration. So most of my photos are seven seconds in length. When it comes to the video, much more important. Um, I fade in and out medium generally. Uh, it just brings it in and out a little bit nicer. It just sounds better to me, but that's my personal taste. The two important buttons are select start and set end point. So if I decided the first little bit of the second clip wasn't very good, I could hit set start point and everything before that is gone. And same here, if I decided I'd had enough at three and a half minutes, hit set end point and we cut straight to the final photo. Um, just as an aside, I've been on about, you know, your viewpoint before. The view I got here was OK. Um, could have done with the camera being a little bit lower. You know, you can only just see the tops of people's heads, but very probably that was the only viewpoint I could have at the time. Finally, we now need to save your video ready for upload to YouTube. So we go to File, Save Movie. I go for High Definition Display. probably seen the poor computers getting very old and therefore very slow. Uh, these are all videos I've got in the pipeline ready to upload. My computer automatically selects this folder to save Movie Maker videos into. So we're saving as type MPEG4, which is MP4. And I'd hit save. I'm not going to. You can assume I've done it. And that's all there is to it. Once that video is saved, you're ready to upload to YouTube. So just to finish this section off on the editing side, um, a quick checklist of things. We've kind of covered a lot of it already. Um, first of all, striking. You know, make sure the ringing quality is good. There's no serious method mistakes or crunches. Um, it can be very embarrassing for someone seeing themselves go wrong online. Um, Lengthwise, I tend to find four to five minutes of a tower is perfectly enough. Um, obviously, some videos are longer, particularly if it's a very, very good bit of ringing, you might want to keep it going for longer, but generally five minutes worth is about enough. Um, smarten it up, you might want to add videos, um, you might want to add photos at the start, sorry. You know, animate it, you know, play with, just play with it, have a bit of fun. But at the end of the day, experiment and enjoy. Okay, and finally, so we've done the filming, we've got our footage, we've done the editing if we want to edit it, and now we're ready to upload to YouTube itself. So the first thing you need is a YouTube account. Uh, if you've got a Google account, such as for Gmail, uh, then you will have a YouTube account already. Uh, the two are linked. Most of us go under an alias. I've always gone under Simon Bellringer, but it's entirely up to you. Some people do use their full names. To upload the video, what you want is the little camcorder button here, create a video or post. So there's two options. You can either go live, which I've only done once, and that was at the youth contest in 2018. Or you can go to upload video, which is what we want. OK, so once you've hit the upload button, it'll bring you to this screen. It says drag and drop video files, but you can click the big grey arrow. So we'll select the video we want and as a disclaimer here these are videos I've got in the pipeline and will hopefully make their various appearances at some point. So something for you to look forward to. So we've selected the video we want which is Corsten. And it'll bring this screen here up. 
So the title required, if you don't change the title, um, then it'll be what you save the video as. So I would normally go Steadman triples at Boston Somerset. Description, tell your vi viewers about your video, maybe about the bells, maybe about the outing, maybe about the people. Uh, the thumbnail option you won't have at the moment. Once the video has been uploaded and is ready to go, you'll get three different thumbnails. These are little screen captures, screenshots from various points in the video, which will be uh, used when showing your video. They're like the thing that attracts people to watching it. They kind of give a very quick picture overview of what your video is about. There's plenty more options than there used to be. Um, this video is not made for kids. That tends to be aimed, you know, at footage specifically for children rather than the general public. Um, tags, they're useful to help people find your video. So at the moment, people might not. Now I type in Corsten. If anyone has Corsten in their search, they might stumble across this. It also helps if you would type Corsten bell ringing. Uh, you're more likely to stumble across it. These tags at the top here are tags I have as a rolling and I've set my YouTube up to insert these tags on every video. It saves me retyping them all the time. So you've got things like change, ringing, church and bells, which pretty much appear in all my videos in any case. And on the very rare occasion, it doesn't. I'll just take them out. Uh, recording date and location are quite cool. You can add those in. Next screen, video elements. I've never used this. And finally, third screen, visibility. Just very quickly, publishing it. You can make it public. That means everybody can see it. If you make it unlisted, only those people who have the link can see it. So it's not available to the general public. You can send your friends a link. They'll be able to watch it. And private means pretty much nobody can view it. And that's all there is to it. As soon as that video's uploaded, you can hit the publish button. And there we are. So that's a very brief beginner's guide to uploading a video to YouTube. Um, a few hints and tips on filming. If you think I've missed anything, um, if I haven't covered anything very well, if you've got any questions to ask, please bung them in the comments and I'd be very happy to respond. Otherwise, Happy YouTubing, enjoy. Um, it's very it's very interesting to showcase your different towers, your different ringers. Um, it captures ringing in that moment. You know, I've got videos, you know, of ringing with people who are sadly no longer with us or have moved away or don't ring anymore. And it's good. it's been really nice, particularly during the current coronavirus outbreak, to sit back and, you know, re-watch footage from years gone by and relive some very happy memories. And that's one thing that making these videos does do, as well as showcasing different towers from across the country and across the world, indeed. Um, and it's just a very useful resource for people nation and worldwide. So I hope you enjoy it as much as I've making videos these last 10 years. And I look forward to seeing your results. Thank you for watching.